There's lots of different reasons that you might use puppets in the classroom, but the most common one is, as the least knowledgeable member of the group, students often feel far more comfortable putting their ideas forward because the puppet's non-judgmental. He isn't going to assess what they say or what they think. It's more about all contributing to find a solution and work together to help the puppet. At the start of the lesson, Dougie talked directly to the children and he was the one who set the context, set the problem. He asked the children for their help to work out plants that were edible and inedible. I'd like to plant things that you can eat. But I've got a bit of a problem because I'm not sure which plants are safe to eat. Do you think you can help me? A puppet is um, a good tool for a science teacher because it allows the children to be able to take ownership of their investigations and produce a real product or a real answer for a real purpose. So whatever the context, the puppet can be inquiring for some help or um, wanting um, a solution to a problem and the children get the chance to solve that problem for a familiar face and a, and a face or a furry face that they really like and engage with on a regular basis. The idea was that the children got into large groups and created a Venn diagram so that they could sort the items into edible and inedible. So if it was for us to eat, would it be edible or inedible? Inedible! Well what about this one? Yeah. 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 You can't eat a tree. But you can't eat wood. You can't eat wood. Yeah. But then you do blisters. I'll give you blisters, okay? Any other reason for not eating a tree? It's not blisters. It's um, splinters. Splinters. Charlie, your tomato, where are you going to put that? Edible. Yes. And, and, they, and they can be in you know, edible when, when they're um, not right. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. You have to wait until they're right before you can eat them. Okay, so where are you going to put it then? In your middle. Okay. So the children's second task was to design a garden plot for Dougie using what they'd learned about inedible and edible. To use a puppet in a classroom, some teachers might think that you need to be this all singing, all dancing, jazz hands type teacher. But actually, what you can do is have that puppet talk to you and you can voice what the puppet has said to you. You don't have to use amazing voices, you don't have to put on a big drama with curtains and lighting and stage. You can simply translate what the puppet is saying in your ear for the children um, and they will buy into it and they will look at the puppet and they will think the puppet is talking um, and they do that very easily. They go into the world of, of drama in a, in a way that we don't so we all worry about it as teachers. Um, will they come with me? And they always will because they can do it, they do it every day. They go out to play and they go into the world of drama without a thought. So it's only us as adults that find that difficult and, and sometimes the stress is that you think that the children won't come with you and that they're going to go, it's a puppet, but they're not. They're, they're going to engage with the idea, they're going to come on board with it because they do it on a daily basis every single playtime and probably halfway through the lessons when you don't really want them to as well <laughs> so it's very easy for them. Often students who are less likely to talk in, class in the classroom either because they're worried about being wrong or because they think they're not as able as some of the other students are far more likely to talk either to the puppet or even in some situations it's appropriate to give the puppet to the child and let the child talk through the puppet. Again, this removes them from a situation where they might feel that their answers are being judged by either a teacher or other students because they're putting their ideas across through the puppet and then the puppet takes responsibility for the ideas and the answers.